Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the um, annual meeting. This is the 2022 Sun City Peachtree Annual Meeting. Um, welcome. We have about 100 people joining us today. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And um, this is my second time doing this. So if I screw up just a little bit, we'll just go ahead and carry on after that. Um, our agenda today, we're going to do welcome and introductions and our association. We're going to do our developer update, our association update. We're going to have our um, chairperson of our finance committee, Bob Nelson, do our um, financial update. We're going to do our question and answers that were submitted ahead of time. And then Delaine Newberry is going to be doing our lifestyle update. And then we're going to adjourn. So our welcome and introductions. I am Vicki Spivey. I am your property manager, general manager here. We have Delaine Newberry, who is our lifestyle director. Taylor Twilley is our community association assistant. Jane Widener is our office manager. Roy Wilson is our maintenance um, supervisor. Barrett Williams is our maintenance tech. And we also have Mike Wallace, who is our heritage property management CE, uh, uh, CFO. Anyway, he works for heritage. He's my boss. And then we also have Lanier Coulter, who is our uh, association attorney with Colton Sierra. Um, our board of directors is Jason Garrett, who is our president. Julie Solonoro is our secretary. Brian Sucker is the vice president of finance and Pulte. He goes to our finance meetings. And we have Allie Bleakley, who is the controller of Pulte. She also joins our finance committee meetings. And Tim Poff, who is our land development manager for Pulte, and he's the one that um, is clearing all the land so we can build new houses. Um, the Dell Webb Sun City Peachtree Association's um, goal is the Sun City Peachtree Homeowners Association is run by a board of directors to oversee the common assets of a property area, manage its finances, run business affairs, enforce and set up rules, and seek to the maintenance and upkeep of the area. In other words, it provides structure to a community, protects property value, and ensures it continues to be a pleasant place to live. I'm sorry, I'm letting more people in. The Sun City Peachtree Community Association Association is responsible for enforcement of all CCNRs, the covenants, conditions, and restrictions for the community, maintaining and enforcing all community standards, preserving, enhancing, and protecting the common areas, which are the assets of the community. And most of all, fostering an inclusive community and promoting an active lifestyle. Our 2021 accomplishments, we did get a new RFID front gate that you can use your sticker for instead of a clicker. We resurfaced the tennis and the pickleball courts. We have a new pool gate that you can use a fob for instead of using the numbers. We replaced all the tile in the outdoor pool. And there were also some cracks in the outdoor pool that we found when we drained the pool and we, we um, fixed those. And we replaced all the posts on the children's playground equipment. What we have planned to do in 2022 is continue all our ups, continuing our landscape upgrades, which is repairing out the shade out areas along the major roads, the Del Webb, uh, Spring Forest, and Sun City Parkway, and replacing dead and declining shrubs and trees. We also are replacing the carpet on the main floor of the amenity center, and that will be done in the second quarter. Um, we're painting the light poles in the sports complex area, and um, our developer update, in 2021, um, they sold 106 homes and they had 117 closings. Um, projection sales is 100, 122 homes and closings is 113 is what they projected to do in 2022. And now special thanks to our finance committee, 2021 committee. Bob Nelson is the chair last year. He will also be a chair again this year. Ron Thompson, who is an outgoing vice chair. He um, turned off at the end of the year. Thomas Dinio, who is our secretary, and we always like to keep him the secretary because he takes really good notes. Lynn Anderson is also an outgoing member for 2021. Marsha Melton is an in outgoing member for 2021. John Hevener is a new member that took over Marsha's when she moved to Tennessee. Um, financial update is Bob Nelson is going to do our financial updates. He's going to review our 2021 um, budget, I mean, our 2020 on financials, he's going to review our capital reserves, 
and he's also going to go over the 2022 budget review. And I'll turn it over to Bob. Thanks, Becky. Let's start with our 2021 financial review with operating income. Association fees for the year came in just over $4 million at $4,004,000. And miscellaneous income, which is next, includes advertising activities and, and then some other fees at $92,922 for total operating income for the physical year and calendar year of $4,097,000. So that's our income situation. That's what we collected. Let's move on to the next slide so we can see where we our expenses and where we spent money. General administration is the first up with just over 504, uh, $500, $400. Insurance and property fees that came in at 155,000. Landscape, which is the biggest single expenditure that includes not only the common areas, but every property owner's home came in at just over $2,010,000. Utilities, 506,000. Maintenance and services, uh, 495,600. And recreation area for 245,000. For total, the year expenses of 3,900 and almost $19,000. So let's see how that came together. Income for the year was 4,097. Expenses, 3,918. For a gross total uh, cash exceeding cash exceeding uh, uh, expenses of one hundred seventy eight thousand dollars. Next thing we did, we transferred to the reserves, the capital reserves, so we have money to replace the assets as needed, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and leaving an operating net total of a of a decrease of seven hundred seventy one thousand nine hundred and four dollars. It's the $250,000 reserves came from leftovers from prior year. There's excess cash, which we held in reserve temporarily. Let's take a look at the reserve for 2021. Income comes from initiation fees on new home sales. It totaled 113,000. Resale initiation fees of 91,582. And investment income from the funds held aside in the capital reserve of $25,000. Total reserve income for the year 2021 came in at $223,825. This is it. Uh, okay. Last year on capital expenses, we've heard a little bit before, but let's go through it again. The front gate. Uh, replacement of $58,000, pool entry system, 16, replacement of playground equipment post, 37,000, contribution to the golf course pond, 12,000, tennis court resurfacing, 13,000, pickleball court re resurfacing, 9,500, small waterfall, waterfall pump replacement, 11,000, pool tile repair and replacement, 12,000, and repair cracks in Gunite and the ocean and the outdoor pool 16 for a total of $186,000 of capital expense spent in the year 2021. The, the capital reserve ended the year 2021 with cash on hand of $367,000 and at Merrill Lynch and investments in ultra safe CDs and very high rated bonds at $1,272,000 for a total reserve balance ending last year of a million six thirty nine nine sixty six. Where does the reserve funding come from? Initiation fees on new home sales and initiation fees on existing home resales. Return on investment for funds invested. And last and importantly, transfer of value excess funds from the operating account. So that's 2021. How about 2022? What does it look like? Operating income, association fees increase to $4,485,000 and miscellaneous income uh, goes up to $168,000 as, as hopefully we resume and are able to do more activities. Total income for the year, budget of year, $4,653,000. That is based upon 1,580 homes closed last year and adding 120 more homes this year, taking the total home sites at year end projected at a, 
1700. Operating expenses for 2022 are budgeted at general administration, $607,000. Insurance and property taxes, 155,000. Recreation area, 200, just under 284,000. And the big boy landscaping, all the general uh, property, as well as every homeowner, $2,383,000. Utilities, 528. Maintenance fees, 591. And total expenses, $4,494,587. Leaving a net income at this point of $158,634. That's in the budget for the current year. Reserve income for the current year, the budget year, 2022. Initiation fee income based upon adding new homes, 105,000. Resales initiation fee, 87,500. Investment income, 18,000. And a total reserve income of $210,500. Now let's compare 2021 and 2022. And, and you've seen all these numbers before. Uh, well, I call your attention to 2022 budget column in the very bottom, net income. Move up three lines to transfer to reserves. That's where the income we saw just a moment ago, $158,000 gets transferred into the capital reserve to, to, to be available when we need to replace the common assets. So can we move on then? Yeah. Okay. 2021 versus 2022 budget reserve. We have initiation fees going up. We have reserve income of 193 moving up to 210. Capital expense moving up lightly. And, and that's what the two years look side by side. Thank you so much, Bob. Now we're gonna move on to the question and answers. And I do realize that Zoom has screwed us up and they're only letting a hundred people into our meeting. Which means there's a lot of people that aren't going to be able to uh, join us today, but we are going to be um, recording this and it'll it'll be on the website and I'll also send it out in an e-blast right after the meeting. So if you have neighbors that are saying they can't get on, if you don't want them in your house, then just tell them that it will be recorded. Um, due to the large number of similar questions, we have consolidated several of your questions into one. So um, if you don't see your exact wording on here, it's because they've been consolidated. Um, these are financial questions that people sent in. So could you break down the management fee to show where the $196,320,000 is going? Why is there an 8% increase in 2022? This is paid to Heritage Property Management Company, the managing agent for the association. They're responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the association, including billing of assets, processing and payment of invoices, and production of monthly financials, as well as the on-site staff. This increases due to the additional homes that will be added in 2022. Why do we have a phone at the softball field at a cost of $825 annually? Shouldn't all the cell phones be available? Shouldn't all the cell phones available be sufficient to call anyone? And that is a county ordinance that a 911 direct line be placed at all recreation facilities. The phone at the softball field and also at the sports building and indoor outdoor pools are strictly 911. You can't call anybody else but the 911 with those phones. Um, what is done to control the cost and ensure the fulfillment of the nature state contract? Is the work bid out in whole or in pieces? The bid process is a joint effort with the Finance uh, Committee and the Property and Grounds Committees. The bid is a whole contract, is not bid out in pieces. Property and Grounds, along with the management staff, oversee the work to make sure the contract is fulfilled. What is the item for the RV storage of $1,800? Did the association have an RV that requires renting the space? No, we do not. This is for the maintenance of the temporary RV park that residents rent spaces for their RV boats, et cetera, that is up um, off of Jordan Hill Road. What area is a recreational area maintenance for $5,815? Seems like a large sum for a parking area. Is that for the RV area? No, this, this um, recreational maintenance area is for maintenance and upgrades for the softball field, the dog park, the bocce courts, and the booths area just happen to be in that um, line item also. Um, what encompasses in the vendor fair expense of $8,000? This fund is for the table and chair rentals for the vendor, vendor fair. It also pays for the directory given out at the two fairs that we have each year. This expense is offset by the income that we earn from renting table space to the vendors. 
Um, we would like to hear an update for the question on recycling surfaces that came up already at the 2021 meeting. The DFL, who's our trash uh, collector, their contract ends in December of 2022. We are gonna reconsider this request with the 2023 budget meeting and bids. The reserve study report in September 23, 2021 concludes that the reserve fund strength is at 59.4%. This estimate was based on a lower annual inflation rate, 3%, than the current one. I understand that the FC has considered the outcome of the study. Finance Committee has under considered the outcome of the study. Are there any conclusions on the adequacy of the current reserve fund and are there any suggestions to strengthen it? The reserve study is analyzed and is updated on a yearly basis. Inflationary issues along with any other cost sensitive items are reviewed and accounted for in the overall budget preparation for each year. Per discussions with our third-party consultant, the Sun City Peachtree Reserve Fund is in the top percentile of communities that they prepare reserve studies for. We will continue to look for opportunities to strengthen it even further. The transfer to reserves amount for 2022 is um, $169,533,000. This is approximately $44,000 less than last year's budget. Why has the amount been lowered and exactly how much money is in the reserve fund and who handles the fund? The 2021 budgeted amount for reserves was $7,050. During the year, the Finance Committee makes recommendations to the board to transfer excess funds from the operating account as they become available. Our reserve fund is held in a separate account at Tr Truist Bank, which used to be the AT, but they've merged and that's Truist. As of December 2021, the amount in the reserve fund is $1,639,966. The fund is managed by Merrill Lynch at the direction of the board through recommendations from the Finance Committee. The funds are invested in high quality co corporate bonds and CDs based on the policy established by the board and the Finance Committee. Is the fitness equipment replaced? Is the fitness, fitness equipment replacement covered in the reserve study? How is it decided when to replace it as some of the equipment appears to be the original? The equipment is maintained regularly uh, with a maintenance company. It is replaced as recommended by that company and the property and grounds committee with the guidance of the reserve study. The association dues continue to increase when the community keeps growing and adding residents. I would think that our costs should go down. Also, the amenity center was not fully open in 20. 2020 and 2021, where did the surplus money go to? While the community does continue to add members, it is also adding, adding common areas to maintain which offsets the additional revenue. The Finance Committee, Management Company, and the Board review the budget on an annual basis. Both income and expense are analyzed to determine needs for upcoming year. The decision on setting due levels are made once the analysis is complete. Even with the amenities being closed or limited to the residents due to COVID restrictions, the, the facility still had to remain in operation as well as our fixed costs remaining in place. Insurance to pay on the building, utility payments such as street lights, maintenance on pools and spas, alarms, DKS monitoring systems, entrance feature operations, and landscaping of homes and common areas are examples of these costs. Operation costs do not necessarily go down just because things were not open for use. Why do you print and deliver the color Sun City activities brochure, the buzz, when everyone has an email to receive information? I think it's too expensive to print this in all in color. Not printing and sending to email would save money and reduce the budget for everyone. And it, this suggestion um, should be submitted to the communication committee for their consideration and recommendation to the board. But also we wanna let you know that the advertising income balances out the expense of the printing. So every, the buzz is actually paid for itself. What constitutes approximate 6% income, 6% increase in the association employee wages in 2022 when there's a 3% in 2021 as their duties increased? The increase was set at 4%, which is a cost of living increase. It wasn't six, it was, it was set at four. Um, what is causing the large increase in the landscaping color category? This is for additional common areas and berms and pods, 15, 16, and 17 in the additional berms on Debwell Parkway. Why is there a large increase in the r and general maintenance category? Um, we don't do this by um, 
percentage, we are having additional projects such as repairing and painting the footbridges, pressure washing the amenity center, sports center, and, and sidewalks. Um, those are projects that are scheduled for 2023. What constitutes the increase in the clubhouse staff wages? We did have some pay increases for some of the employees. Um, our assistant is also live, leaving uh, mid-year, so we do have a training salary for somebody to come in and train with him um, while he gets ready to, to transition to another position. The fees for the RP par RV park have increased in the past two years. Expenses have been negligible for 2021. What is the justification for the continued increase? Increases are to get the rates more in line with the other RV rental lots in the area. Why is the 2022 activities budget at $88,000 when only $28,000 was spent in 2021? Due to COVID restrictions that we had in 2021, we had significantly less association events in 2021. We are planning a full calendar of events for 2022, which includes some two and three night events. Has Pulte shared any information on the status of the new entrance? Um, I'm on Team and Road. The entry should be open to the residents mid-summer. When will Dell Webb Boulevard be complete? We don't have a schedule for that yet. The parkway will be completed as we develop pods adjacent to the parkway. Um, considering safety concerns and upkeep, is a traffic circle something Dell Webb Pulte should pursue at the team and road entry? A traditional intersection is already built. The intersection meets standard traffic engineering design standards as well as county requirements. What happened to the street sweepers coming through every week in the construction areas? We still use sweet street sweepers in the active pods that are being built. We are not actively sweeping pod seven due to only one or two homes in production in that pod. Is Pulte Del Webb, is it Pulte Del Webb's intention to add an entry at the south end of Jordan Hill Road where the con current construction road is? The current master plan contemplates an entrance that follows in close proximity to the construction road. The timeline is not set on when the construction will begin. We are currently working on the east side of the development. When and where will additional walking trails be built throughout the woods? There is no plans to build any additional natural walking trails. Will Del Webb build a woodworking shop, a paint booth, an art facility to include a potter's wheel and kiln for residential use? There are not plans to have separate buildings for these activities. However, once we are ready for the additional amenities building, some of these could be considered. What is the timeline for additional pickleball and tennis courts to be built? The board has received the recommendation for the expansion of the sports facility and is currently evaluating the request. The board will work with the uh, clubs and activities com um, committee and the property and grounds committee on a resolution for that request. I understand that solar panels are not permitted in SCP. Are there any plans to consider permitting solar panels in the future, considering that there is plenty of sun here and the energy prices are estimated to increase? Please submit to, so, I'm sorry, please submit your suggestion to the Architecture Review Committee for their consideration and recommendation to the board. Where will the permanent RV storage lot be located? There is not a permanent RV lo storage lot in Sun City. However, there are several RV storage lots in close proximity to the community. Could a yield sign, a yield sign on the guest side of the entry and a right-of-way sign on the resident side of the entry be installed? Please submit this suggestion to the Property and Grounds Committee for their consideration and recommendation to the board. With our trees maturing and creating more and more shade, what is our plan for grass? We know that the Bermuda dies in the shade. Along with many others, I will need to plant this spring in various, various places. What grass should we use? Is there, is it every homeowner selecting something different? There is a version of Bermuda that is shade and drought tolerant called Tiff Tough um, that it, the association has used in some of their common areas. And you can um, um, request some bids from Naturescapes or any other landscape company to do that. When will all the COVID protocol restrictions be lifted? COVID restrictions, food restriction, guest wristbands, children's swim hours, and the North Pole will be lifted on March 1st. This gives the management team time to get staff trained on the guest policies and understand the protocols. So this means watch the buzz for uh, activities coming up. That means softball, um, 
community breakfast, everything is coming back. So look for the buzz to come out with all that information um, on March 1st. When will the amenity center's furnishes be updated? The carpeting is on the schedule to replace in the second quarter. Furniture is under consideration for the uh, 2023 budget. What is a permanent solution to the two? deterioration of the fascia on the back side of the building was this a design area error due to the way the balcony was constructed water continually sleeps under the fascia and needs to be replaced periodically we would will we have an in-person annual meeting next year we are considering have a meeting off-site due to the large number of residents that we have here other high-end communities decorate the street lights for christmas holidays can sense if you do this Sun City does not own the streetlights, uh, Spalding County or EMC does, so we can't decorate them. Would the softball field ever have lights for nighttime play? This was suggested several years ago and we found the field was too close to residential homes for lighting to be installed. Can a new check-in system be installed that can use smartphone technology in addition to the membership cards? This is something that we can have our board of boarding committees research. Once the COVID restrictions are lifted, will, will I be able to bring a guest to the gym, indoor pool, or theater? Once the restrictions are lifted, we will go back to the pre-COVID rules and regulations, which include guest policies for the building and events. <clears throat> Can the indoor pool temperature be set two to, two to three degrees higher? It is too cold for older residents with arthritis. Also, it is too deep for some to exercise. The board of directors has established indoor pool temperature of between 83 and 85 degrees. According to the National Pool and Spa Institute, a two to, four, two to four degree fluctuation is well within acceptable requirements. We are targeting indoor pool humidity at 50 to 60 percent in the indoor air temperature near 80 degree maximum. The pool level starts at 3.3 feet 6 inches and does not go any deeper than 5 feet. Why is there only one application of pine straw now in the common area and why doesn't the homes get their straw paint? Pine straw application was changed in 2012 to only one application in the common area painted for cost savings. Painting the straw deters insects and keeps the straw from breaking down. It would be very costly to paint the homes as well as the common area. Is there a financial incentive for the property management company to come in under budget? Heritage Property Management and its employees are paid a straight salary regardless of the budget spending or whether the budget comes in under or over. Why can't we have more evening trips? to Atlanta events. We do plan these types of trips. In fact, we had a bus trip to the theater to see the Grinch in December. If you have other suggestions for outings, please submit them to the Clubs and Activities Committee. What is the board's objection to decorative concrete overlays on the driveways? Please submit this suggestion to the Architecture Review Committee for their consideration and recommendation to the board. How many residents are there in Sun City? As of December 30, First, 2021, we have 1580 homes and approximately, uh, approximately 2,400 residents. What are the plans for the gatehouse and what is the status? Currently, we're working with the insurance company and contractor to finalize the contract to perform the repairs. Because of the magnitude of the repairs, it is a complicated process and requires several, several legal reviews. However, once the contract is finalized and executed, the work will begin, which we anticipate in the very near future. Once construction does get started, as well with all construction areas, please keep away for your own safety and the safety of the workers. What are the plans for another activities club or amenity center? Dale Webb does have a space allocated on the site plan for additional amenities. The exact usage and timeline will be determined as build out progresses. When will the residents of Sun City be able to form their own board of directors? The Sun City Peachtree homeowners will eventually be appointed to the board as we get closer to transition. The transition will happen when the community is complete. Has any thought been given to providing an establishment for Sun City residents to get a meal without joining a private golf club within the community? Del Webb has never planned for any establishment of this type inside of Sun City. Could the speed limit be raised to 35 to 40 miles per hour? The state law that roads that allow golf carts be kept at 25 miles an hour. Why isn't the amenity building open 24 hours? We are not set up to have 24 hour access to the building. Why isn't the pool open year round? This suggestion has been made to the clubs and activities committee and a recommendation has been sent to the board of directors for consideration. We were told that when we purchased our home at Sun City, that Sun City is a secure community. Will a fence be built around the property? 
it has never been Dale Webb's intention to fence the community. The association nor its declarant assume any liability, representations, or guarantees regarding safety or security. If there are current safety concerns within the community, please contact the local public safety office, which is the Spalding County Sheriff's Office. When having events in the back of the building, we are not given access to the downstairs bathrooms as the doors are locked. We are told that we have to go up the stairs or go around to the front. Why is that? Because many times there are indoor activities going on in the exterior rooms of the downstairs um, building, and there's no direct access to the bathrooms, and this is the only solution. Why does Naturescapes do such a good job on the common area and such a poor job on our homes? Lots of weeds in the yards, poor mowing schedule, and poor workmanship. Naturescapes is now investing in a work visa program to improve on their service and quality of service in 2022. If you have specific, specific concerns about your lawn, please use the nscapes.com slash suncity request form. This goes to the Naturescapes owner, their branch manager, their account manager, their production manager, as well as several Sun City staff so we can um, oversee your request. Could the committees, especially the finance committee, hold regularly scheduled open meetings? For the consideration of the resident's personal information, directors and committee members are responsible for protecting the association's confidential information and the privacy of the residents. If you have a concern, committees will hold open forums during their meetings. You may contact each committee to schedule a time via their email address, which is posted in the buzz and on the clubpeachtree.net website. That is the end of our question and answer period. I'm going to turn it over to Delaine Newberry now to go over um, our lifestyle. Good morning, everybody. Um, so Vicki has kind of uh, started my party for me a little bit early, but I, I do want to talk a little bit about how we ran things in 21. This is sort of a tradition for our annual meeting. Um, most of you guys were around to see us kind of start to transition in 21 uh, and, you know, some changes to our events. We still had our traditional indoor triathlon, uh, Senior Health and Fitness Day. Um, Vicki mentioned the field trip to the Fabulous Fox, which is quite a lot of fun. Um, a lot of our clubs uh, and interest groups are starting to transition back to their traditional events um, and meetings and things of that nature. Um, we uh, also had Santa back with us again this year, which was an awful lot of fun. Uh, the Garden Club, I would like to just really praise them for their creativity, for bringing in some new vendors. They um, have worked tirelessly to expand our farmer's market and um, have done just a really great job at that. Um, Vicki spoke a little bit about our board appointed committees. Um, and I just want to kind of highlight CAC very quickly, um, just due to their work um, at one of our sister properties over at Lake Oconee, their CAC requested from us an opportunity to meet with them. And so we facilitated that, which was also a lot of fun. And this transition, yes. So um, obviously also in 21, we kind of went to outdoor events, um, but we also started doing in-person new homeowner orientations where we talked about the board appointed committees that Vicki has spoken about um, earlier in our meeting. Um, those board appointed committees are all homeowners and we also talk at new homeowner orientation about upcoming openings. So if any of you are ever interested in those and see those openings come up, um, they're always anxious to talk to new homeowners about new positions. Uh, we started a new bicycling interest group, which is great and I think kind of been a long time coming and they are very organized and, and hitting the ground running. Uh, and our clubs hosted some year-end banquets. Again, in our transition, did a wonderful job. They had two session events, um, some outdoor things, uh, and just really kind of took the bull by the horns and did a really great job. Um, as discussed earlier, um, we are in 22, looking through uh, the end of this first quarter, uh, transitioning into our pre-COVID status. Um, we uh, have planned a couple of braves trips. Um, we're going back to trivia in March. Uh, just, you know, lots of the things that we normally would have. Um, we already had our activities expo with 40 participating clubs and interest groups. Um, we'll be featuring some photos from that event in the March buzz. Um, the postponed events are almost completely done. Um, 
Chicago Sun Creek is coming up in March. We're doing pianos, guys. Um, in August, we're having Dorothy Bishop's One Woman Show. Um, again, these are going to be two and three night events in an effort to give everyone an opportunity to attend who would like to. Uh, we're going back to our vendor fair. We're in the process of planning the spring vendor fair right now. It will look like every other vendor fair we've ever had prior to COVID, um, which means about 100 vendors. Um, all club group association activities will resume within the first quarter of 22. Um, our clubs and groups are going to probably uh, be in touch with us about, you know, how they want to meet. So be on the lookout if you belong to those clubs and interest groups about what they're doing and when. Um, and the upcoming events emails that I send out once a week, if you're not subscribed or receiving the upcoming events emails, please let me know because that is far and away the very best way to get the latest on ticket sale information from our clubs, Peachtree Street Singers performances, Footlights has some really great clinics and um, short play coming up. So, or a play of short skits, I should say. Um, anyway, lots of information and lots of activities coming up and I'm um, really looking forward to 22 right now. Thank you, Delane. Um, once again, I want to apologize to people that aren't here, but uh, that Zoom had screwed up our meeting and only put it at 100 capacity instead of 1,000 that I had put in. Um, if any of you have any questions about, uh, for me, just email me at manager at clubpeachtree.net. If you have any suggestions or questions for Delane, her email address is lifestyle at clubpeachtree.net. Um, once again, this is being recorded. We will go ahead and post this um, after the meeting on the website, and also I'll send out a link for it um, in the e-blast. So thank you, everybody, for coming, and um, we'll see you soon.